Unforgettable scenes from one week ago today when what started out as a protest of the scheduled certification of Joe Biden's victory turned into a violent storming of the United States Capitol. Rioters in the hallways of the Capitol chambers in what would turn out to be a deadly altercation. Right now, federal prosecutors investigating more than 160 cases and looking into charges rioters could face. Many arrests have been made already. Several arrested, including Arizonans facing a long list of crimes and likely more. So federal criminal defense attorney Jason Lamb is joining us this morning to give some perspective on the charges these Capitol rioters could face and what further legal actions could be taken before the inauguration. So Jason, thanks for joining us this morning. As I'm sure you saw, we finally got an update from the Department of Justice yesterday about some of these pending cases and the many charges uh, that could still be in store for those who are already in custody or still waiting to be identified. Yeah, Olivia, the United States Attorney for Washington, D.C., and that's where these cases are going to be prosecuted, no matter where the rioters came from, at least at this point, um, has made it clear that they have 170 open files against individuals who've been identified as participating in the riots. Now, thus far, we've only seen about 70 arrests really the low hanging fruit, people who are on video, um, people with weapons, et cetera. But I think what's common uh, in federal criminal cases and, and as will be the case here, you know, the trespassers like the man from Arizona, uh, Shaman Jake Bighorn, um, people like that will cooperate and give more information about a conspiracy. What actually caused this to come to pass? Who are the organizers? Who said to bring weapons? And that's where the real felony charges lie in the future. Those are the charges that carry major imprisonment terms. And that's what the government's looking for in this case. Just next week, in the same setting, we're going to be seeing a presidential inauguration. Obviously, safety a key concern. Does that play into how long some of those people who have been arrested can be held uh, just out of a precaution or an abundance of safety? Or, or what are the parameters as they're figuring out uh, maybe the more charges that will be filed? Well, there's a general rule in, in federal criminal cases. Um, if the government can show by clearing convincing evidence that you're a danger to the community or others, or that you're a flight risk, you're detained, period. On the other hand, if there are conditions or combinations of conditions, and, and a great example in a case like this would be a home confinement with, with, with an ankle bracelet uh, that will offset those risks, then someone can be released. But in this case, um, I think prosecutors are going to play it by the book. Uh, I, but I do expect prosecutors to use the full time limits that are available. And if that just happens to go past the inauguration, well, so be it. But I don't think that's going to be a, a tactic that they're going to formally in, endorse or announce. We know that one U.S. Capitol Police officer died from injuries sustained in the melee out there and others are severely injured. Very disturbing video you've seen, I'm sure, of uh, another officer being beaten by a, an American flagpole out there. Uh, so potentially there could be more lost lives down the road. Um, what about the concept of felony murder charges as these groups of people are taking part in what is criminal activity? Yeah, Olivia, that, that's a very distinct possibility. However, that's not something that any prosecutor, particularly experienced prosecutors uh, like the ones that are working this case, are, are just going to jump to. And I don't think you can charge a crowd of thousands of people who were there for, for the murder of this officer. But as office, as investigators dissect the evidence, they see who was holding the weapons, who was dragging the officer, who was pummeling him. Uh, those, those people are going to have some real legal and logistical problems. But, you know, there, there's the old adage that federal prosecutors don't bring a case unless they're, they're, they're pretty darn sure they can get a conviction. But I think once the, the evidence develops and frankly, people cooperate, and I'm virtually certain that's going to happen at some point, um, we'll have a better idea of who was involved um, in, in the murder of the officer, the, the agreement, the planning and the execution of it. And it would not be unheard of to see murder charges. Um, in this case, but don't expect that for months to come because prosecutors want to get it right. This will not be an emotional prosecution. It will be very thoughtful and evidence driven. And there's got to be a lot of video from inside uh, the halls there that we have not uh, been privy to and, and maybe won't be for quite some time. Jason, thanks so much for your perspective today. Always uh, good to see you. Jason so Lamb, attorney.